What is up guys? I am Michael Mohammed, the world's most inconsistent YouTuber, and I am coming at you here with something of an unpopular opinion, which no one seems to really agree with me on. I I've literally tried to talk about this with so many people, and honestly, I think I've found virtually no one who agrees with me on this point, so I might as well put it out there. So Smash Brothers recently came out, and you know, it's freaking amazing. For those of you who have uh, played this game, I will play the little intro video. So, yeah man, like, me personally, my, my thing is like, now that this game is out, like recently I've unlocked all the characters, I've been doing a lot of classic mode runs, I've dabbled in spirit mode or world of light. To be honest, I really don't like World of Light that much. I think it's, I think it's one of those things that's probably uh, really good in like small doses. Like maybe if you're on the bus or the train or something, or like a quick play session. I don't think World of Light is actually that fun if you like sit down and play it for a, a good amount of time. I think it's more fun to just sit down and do a couple of classic runs of whichever characters you feel like trying out. Like maybe you want to try out Incineroar, or maybe you want to try out Ridley or something. And, yeah, I just find, like, playing classic mode has been more fun of a single-player experience for me. Or playing, like, Mob Smash or something like that. I, I just don't think this World of Light thing is really my kind of thing. Like, the whole way this game forces you to have to unlock these characters, it's like, what if you just want to fucking play Zero Suit Samus? Or what if you just want to fucking play Incineroar? Like, I, I feel like the unlocking characters was a really kind of a grindy step that took several hours to do it and then the world of light you can't even play like the single player adventure with these characters you've unlocked you have to unlock them in world of light and yeah for me personally i don't think it's that amazing but that's not the unpopular opinion i'm talking about because many people seem to agree with me that world of light <laughs> is not as great as we might have hoped my my unpopular opinion is different my unpopular opinion is this now that Super Smash Brothers is here, we have a lot of people who insist on on playing this game using GameCube controllers, right? Like a lot of people like to play Super Smash Brothers using the GameCube controllers to the point that to the point that um, Nintendo themselves now sells the GameCube controllers, because, wow, this camera's so out of focus, because pretty much, I do not know how long it's going to take this camera to come into focus, it's gonna, it looks like it's taking a long time, but yeah, anyways, Nintendo themselves now, that worked, Nintendo themselves now have been selling these GameCube controllers with adapters for the Nintendo Switch, they did the same thing for the Wii U, the Wii didn't really have to do the adapter thing because it came with GameCube ports, but I, I just found, like, it is just, to me, I grew up with the GameCube, and I remember the Nintendo GameCube as, like, the last great Nintendo console, the last console where I truly enjoyed Nintendo as a company, I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way, because the Wii was not that great, it was really a casual console, and the Wii U was a steaming piece of horseshit. I honestly and truly think the best way to play these games is with Joy-Cons. I don't know about you guys, I, I feel like so many people, as soon as they get the Switch, they never want to use detached Joy-Cons. And also, in case you guys want to know, I did perform a little bit of surgery. Uh, like, these are the grips that come with the Joy-Cons. And I did perform a little bit of surgery to remove that lanyard that actually comes with the grips. Much more difficult to do than I was originally anticipating. I was thinking it would be like a quick one to actually, you should look up a video for how to do it. I didn't, I just kind of figured it out. But It's actually sort of complicated to remove that lanyard. It's like really buried in there. You gotta like remove a spring and then put the spring back for the locking mechanism to work properly. It's pretty hard to remove that lanyard. And if you have, like, young kids in your house, it might be best to keep it on, but for me, with these grips, it's mostly just me 
playing this game, so I find this is really comfortable. Like, here's the thing. I will, I will admit people this, like, if you are to play this game with the detached Joy-Cons with no grip at all, then I will admit to you, the Joy-Cons are pretty small. Like, look, look at how small this is. This is pretty goddamn small. It's, even in your hands, it's kind of like, you know, you're controlling these left sticks with your thumbs. It's, it's kind of uncomfortable to not cramp your hands when there's so little width in the actual controller here, I think. Once you put these grips on, and I actually have a larger grip than this, I actually have one of these grips that kind of adds more fatness to the controller itself, and has like a little slot for AA batteries, but that one I found was a little bit too large. So, maybe if you have gigantic hands that would work the best, but for me, I find that just using this detached Joy-Cons with the grips is like the most comfortable controller I've literally ever used in my entire life. I don't know if you guys understand how much R&D went into developing the Joy-Cons, but I feel like these controllers are like the greatest fucking controllers I've ever used in my life. Just in terms of the design I'm talking about. In terms of like the modular design, like you use like a, I don't know, you play Mario Kart like this or something. Play Smash like this if you have a, a, a limited amount of Joy Cons on you, and yeah, I don't know, man. Like I will give it to the go the GameCube controller that it's a wired input, so it does have a little bit less input latency. But here's another thing: if you have to play through that GameCube adapter, now the signal is going through the GameCube controller into that adapter, and then that adapter connects through the USB port in the docked console to then be converted into a signal in the switch. So there's a few middlemen the signal has to go through to get to the console. I think in time what they will find is the, the control scheme with the least input method is actually playing this game in handheld mode like this, in portable mode. And I think that's actually the least input lag you can possibly have playing this game. Outside of possibly a few of the other wired controllers. But, generally, the only thing I feel like the GameCube controller has going for it is it's a wired controller. Because if you actually look at the GameCube controller, I think it's objectively one of the worst controllers ever designed. I mean, this is a very archaic design. This is a controller that was first released in the year 2001, if, I, if I'm remembering correctly. And, it was mostly designed to be played with simple kids games that came out for the GameCube. Like, I, I, it, to me, it's just the most baffling thing that, like, people are still using this controller. I think people have found that, like, I don't know, there's some problems using the GameCube controller in, in Smash now in terms of how the C-Stick works. And I'm like, yeah, man, like, that's, that's kind of to be expected when you're using a controller that's, like, 15 plus years old. Like, they have not changed the core design of it that much from what I understand. Like, I don't know, I will I will say this, the Joy-Cons do have a little bit of input latency, because the one flaw of Joy-Cons, I think, is that the connections to the con console itself are not as good as, say, the DualShock 4. I've never had a DualShock 4 for the PlayStation disconnect on me. I've had these Joy-Cons randomly disconnect from the console a couple times, so that is a problem. But, like, honestly speaking, I feel like... I feel like there's not much point in playing with a GameCube controller unless you're a professional Smash player. And even then, the only reason to use them is because the input latency is less. I don't think there's any objective reason that it's better to play with these controllers. And it's so weird to me that, like, this game is gonna sell fucking millions of these GameCube controllers. This is the weirdest. I think Smash Brothers is, like, the only game that does this. I don't think in any other video game on Earth do people go out and buy a specific controller on mass to buy it. You're like, yes, okay, when fighting games come out, a few really hardcore enthusiast people will drop a lot of money on arcade sticks. Or they might have it already. So there is that dedicated group of people who like arcade sticks for fighting games. But it's not like the GameCube people. The GameCube people are like even people who are casual as fuck about Smash. 
say they will refuse to play this game unless they have a GameCube controller. And to me, it's like the weirdest thing in the world. I do not understand it. There's so many things that gamers do that I consider myself a huge gamer, and I literally don't understand why people do this stuff. Like, I've had the whole debate about physical games versus digital games, and I think digital games are, like, vastly, vastly... I don't even think it's, like, and I think. I think it's an objective thing that it's, like, vastly better to just have physical games. Apparently, Smash loads a lot slower from the cartridge than it does if you just digitally install the game. This is just one of many... This is something you would already know if you had started buying digital games. When you start buying digital games, you're like, whoa, all my games load really fast now, for some reason. Oh yeah, they're digital. Anyways, guy, that is my unpopular opinion, that there is nothing wrong with just playing Smash with Joy-Cons, seriously. If you like the Joy-Cons, just play Smash with Joy-Cons. There's zero shame in it. Just use some grips if you think it's a little bit small. Like, honestly, I, I just... I, don't, I think once you have the grips... This is more than comfortable. With the with no grips on detached Joy-Cons, yes, it's a little bit small. But like literally this is thicker than like the Wii Boat now when you hold it like this. In each hand. It's like a double it's like a something thicker than the Wii Boat in both your hands. Something bigger than the nunchuck. So really some people like to be contrarian and say the Wii Boat with the nunchuck was better than Joy-Cons. You people are just fucking retarded. Like, honestly, I, I just don't understand people. Pe gamers have this thing where they just adamantly refuse to try new things. Like, they really don't. Gamers are the most stubborn people you'll ever meet, I feel like. They'll, they'll just insist on using something old because it's old. And doing something the old way because they've been doing it this old way their whole life. And they'll just absolutely... They're like fundamentalist Muslims, the way they'll absolutely refuse to accept or try new ideas. And that's just how like a lot of the gaming community is to me, and that's why... I, d I just feel like it's not even worth having the debate with people, because even if you could objectively prove something to people, it doesn't matter. They, they, they are still refusing to change their minds or even try something new, so I just, I just gave up in that sense. But I still feel like it's fun to just talk occasionally about how, in time, we're going to see some tournament class player beating Evo in Smash Ultimate, playing this game in handheld portable mode with like a near field connection to connect to other consoles or something. <coughs> I predict in time it will actually happen. So anyways, I'm Michael Muhammad. That is my unpopular opinion about Smash Brothers. Like and subscribe for more videos like this.